thank you very much for joining us today. Let me make some brief introductions. So Gwen Chetwell, you are the president and COO of SpaceX, and you're responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of all of this amazing engineering work that's done to, um, to create our, our new commercial space, um, I would say commercial space era that we're really developing. So um, thank you so much for joining us, Gwen, to, here today. And we also are joined by Jim Moorhard, who is the um, Deputy Administrator for NASA. So again, all the amazing work that you are doing to really bring us back into space in terms of going, into, going to, to the moon, going to Mars. The Artemis program is really an incredibly ambitious program that you all have developed. And what I, I think that is so special about it is that you are bringing commercial space flight and then of course governmental space flight and all the expertise that comes from both the public sector and the private sector together in this next era of space exploration. So I just cannot tell you how excited I am personally, but all of us at NASDAQ are have a chance to speak with you all today. But we are going to um, talk about the program more broadly. And so, Jim, I'm going to ask, um, this, this launched this week, or past, this past weekend was historic for many reasons. So maybe you can share some of the context around this milestone that you and SpaceX really met this, this, week, this past weekend. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, Dean. Uh, you know, this is really the dawn of a new space age. And SpaceX is on the forefront of it. Uh, we're really trying to, first of all, turn low Earth orbit over to commercial industry. And I say that because we really want NASA to focus on getting to the moon in preparation to go to Mars. But with that, I mean, you think of SpaceX as the first commercial company to take astronauts into the low Earth orbit. It's never been done before. And they own and they operate both the rocket and the spacecraft. And uh, what we're doing right now, uh, with, you know, and a lot of help, uh, you know, SpaceX is just, we're in the flight readiness review last week, we were talking about it. And a uh, 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 gentleman from SpaceX said, you know, this was a partnership that turned into a friendship. And uh, we see it from, from Elon and Gwen all the way down to the line worker. And I think that's what's made us so successful together. And, but it, it's really trying to allow for more research and development on the International Space Station. We're gonna be able to get a full complement of astronauts there. And to be able to do that research, we're gonna increase research by 300% when we start getting a full complement of astronauts up there. And with the demand, we expect that we'll have commercial space stations coming. So I'll stop there, but that's uh, that's really in low Earth orbit. That's our vision. Yeah, I mean it really is a new era, as you said, for space exploration, and it is a different way for NASA to do business, which is partnering with the commercial organizations. So, Gwen, maybe you could share a little bit of what it was like to what it has been like, I should say, to partner with NASA, um, bring the private and the private sector and the public sector together to bring this project to life and what your ambitions are going forward with NASA. That would be great. So, you know, this partnership began in 2005, where we started working on the Commercial Orbital Transportation Services, the COTS uh, program. Um, the, it was really just the proposal phase, but it was a, a new kind of contract. And so we could have discussions with the, with the customer or the partner. Which was NASA. And we did finally sign our Space Act agreement in August of 2006. And then we really started, uh, I'll call it screaming, on getting Falcon 9 and Dragon to a place where we were comfortable launching and flying that, uh, that capability. So we were, um, it was the biggest contract, or a, it's not a contract, it's an agreement. It was the biggest uh, amount of money that an outside organization had contributed to SpaceX at that time. I think it was like $276 million uh, in 2006. And that was just a crazy amount of money at that time. So, you know, I think NASA, NASA definitely put together the right team to work with a company like SpaceX in that time. It might not seem like such a stretch now, but think about us in 2006, we hadn't gotten Falcon 1 to orbit. Uh, we had had one attempt. Uh, and it was not successful. We were working towards our second attempt, but it looked like a big stretch for NASA. And I think that 
well, I, that really paid off for NASA. Um, so they spent about, I think it was a little over $400 million on developing the Dragon 1 capability along with SpaceX. Um, and we were working on Falcon 9 at the same time. To, and that was the cargo vehicle. And then in 2012, we started working on technology that could bring Dragon 1, uh, the cargo vehicle, and turn it into a crew vehicle. And then in 2014 is when we won uh, the, the, the big kind of the, the big prize uh, and we're uh, working very closely then, uh, actually continuing our close work with NASA. So this relationship is extraordinary. So NASA leaned forward really in a quite extraordinary way in 2006 to work with this little tiny company that you know I think people were probably making fun of and scoffing at us and saying they're never gonna get anything done. Um, and so NASA provided not only financial resources, SpaceX contributed probably more on the COTS program uh, than actually I'm sure more on the COTS program than NASA did, but the partnership was amazing. And they brought critical financial resources at a time when we needed it. They also brought technical mentorship and guidance as well. And what we brought to the table was a group of very young, very smart, very capable, energetic engineers, uh, folks that wanted to build a business and were very hungry to do so. Uh, we brought kind of new thinking and new ways of doing business. And I think between the two of us, we figured out the right balance between innovation, leaning in, going fast, with ensuring you're doing the right thing, you're checking everything you need to, ultimately that proved completely successful this weekend, uh, getting uh, Bob and Doug on the uphill ride, getting them there safely. Well, it is really from, from our seat, it looks like an amazing partnership. And as you said, it's really a combination of that innovation, but also the resilience that I think NASA has brought to the program. And they've had a lot of experience with human space travel. And so they know what can go wrong. Um, and you all can imagine what can go right. So it's just a kind of an, a really great blending of those, um, of the two organizations. Um, and I'm sure that there's a lot of stories about how you all work together. But I guess the next question I would have is, what, did, what I'm gonna ask each of you, so I'll start with you, Jim. What do you both find most excited about the rapid growth of the space economy in the years ahead? So what are you most excited about when you look at this economic development and this opportunity that we have in, in space? You know, the, it's, the demand is changing and uh, I, I can't let it go by. Gwen's uh, always so kind, but you know, NASA learned so much from SpaceX too. And uh, it changed who NASA is, uh, and we continue to change uh, with the the direction from the president and the vice president to get to the moon by 2024. We really lit a fire underneath us, uh, so we're going to continue to change, and we have to be agile. and uh, And that's one of the things I've seen with Gwen and Elon in our conversations, where you know they see a need to do something different, and they do it. Uh, as far as the economy goes. You know, we have a proliferation of constellations of satellites in low Earth orbit. So you have that going on. And again, SpaceX is on the forefront of that also. Um, but you, but with us, we're, we have a space station where this development is going on. And it's things like uh, mass producing retinal implants. Uh, we're looking at fiber optic cable and trying to purify it. So you have less relay stations. Uh, we're looking at immunizations for types of pneumonia, uh, for salmonella. It's not a big deal in the United States, but overseas we've, we've saved countless lives on this one immunization. It's those type of things we're working on. And again, the demand is so large, we anticipate it's going to be exponential in growth. Uh, and we're hoping for that and we hope to turn it over to the commercial industry, space industry. Great, and Gwen, what, what about you? What do you see as most exciting? Personally, what I'm really excited about it, uh, is I'm really looking forward to the time, and I don't think it will happen in my lifetime, where we are not only exploring our solar system, but exploring other solar systems mm -hmm. and finding other human-like life forms. And that all sounds crazy, but I remember thinking Elon sounded crazy in 2002, <laughs> when he said he wants to put people on the surface of Mars, and that sounded insane. So, you know, maybe it's not as crazy as I'm thinking. But the approach that NASA has taken has been the exact right approach. You turn over an area for enterprise and innovation to the 
to the commercial sector so that NASA can leverage its very precious funds on doing things where the market and the money to be made is much further out and much harder to see. Uh, th this approach has led to unprecedented investment from venture capitalists into the space sector. No one invested in space before. Uh, and now more money is going in uh, to the sector year over year. It's been an extraordinary, like for m m people should study this. This is really an incredible situation. And I'd love to have uh, brains put on this. So basically NASA's approach to do some investment in SpaceX and the technology, not pay for the whole thing. They definitely did not pay for the whole thing on, uh, on uh, the COTS program. Um, they paid for more on the crew program because the market is less certain. However, we still did a, a great amount of investment on our own uh, as well to the Dragon 2 vehicle. So basically, if you are the market and NASA ends up being the market in low Earth orbit, they'll pay for cargo services, they're paying for crew services, that attracts capital and that attracts entrepreneurial spirit and companies to form to go address that market. And so then again, looking at it's the, the market for the moon and Mars is less certain and NASA's investment, uh, basically turning over the enterprise and low Earth orbit to commercial companies, and then looking at uh, much longer term, more strategic kinds of investments, getting to the moon and Mars. It's a brilliant, brilliant approach. It's the right way. If I could, you know, to add on to that, Gwen, as we're looking towards the moon now, and we're looking at landing at the South Pole of the moon, we know there's water ice there. And our intent is to demonstrate whether we can mine that water ice to create, to provide hydrogen for fuel, oxygen to breathe, and water to drink. With the, the, uh, the gravity well is, is one sixth that of Earth. So the cost of launch is a lot less from the moon. And it may be through 3D printing, through robotics and AI, we'll be able to manufacture on the moon. Now, again, we're looking far down the road, but direction from the president under Space Directive, Policy, Directive 1 is to be sustainable on the moon. But we're looking for that as a stepping stone, possibly, to go to Mars. Uh, and that's really the next thing, but it's creating that economy. We'd have our commercial partners doing that, a lot of that work. We call it in situ resource utilization. And as Gwen knows, she's already, they've just been awarded a contract uh, to participate in developing the human landing system. So that would be basically our LEM from Apollo, it'd be like that, uh, coming from a very small outpost orbiting the, uh, moon called Gateway that's also being developed right now. But again, we want to bring the commercial marketplace to the moon next. And this is exactly, that's a great example of the idea where NASA's really looking at the strategic long-term opportunity of space exploration and then partnering with the commercial organizations that can help you along all those milestones to get there. Um, and SpaceX clearly is on the forefront of that. I have to tell you, Gwen, when, when you all had the Falcon landing, when they came back down and they landed perfectly in place, I, my, our entire family was erupting in screams and, and, uh, and clapping. It was the most, really one of the most amazing sights I have ever seen. Um, I, I know I'm not supposed to ask you more. I have one more question for you, but I would love to find out, like, what was it like for you at that moment when you saw all of that work come to fruition. And then we saw it again, of course, over the weekend as well. Yeah, I actually, I teared up. I'm not really a crier. Uh, I teared up when the two boosters, the side boosters landed at the Falcon Heavy launch. Uh, I think that was February, 2018, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, it's a, Falcon and Falcon Heavy and Dragon, they're extraordinary machines. But I think what made me so emotional about that was it felt like it, it kind of felt like they were live characters, like also an anthropomorphic element of those two, like the brother-sister landing in that beautiful and elegant way. Um, and that was really the final technology piece as far as rockets go that we needed to achieve this kind of near-term market that we're going after here. So Falcon 9 is a beast. It's a huge rocket. Falcon Heavy is three times that, really an extraordinary vehicle. Um, and uh, so, so we, I really felt like kind of a sigh of relief. We got launch covered, um, at least with this partially reusable technology. Um, as you know, Falcon and, and Falcon Heavy, only the first stages are reusable and recoverable and the fairings, we're starting to get that. 
get that down too. But our next generation of vehicle, the Starship system, Starship with Super Heavy Booster, that's where we want both the first stage and the second stage to be fully reusable and fully recoverable and do it in a very rapid way. So almost like aircraft-like operations, that's really what we're shooting for. And we're working on that and we're able to work on that. Um, and by the way, that's part of our human landing system. We're leveraging the Starship capability there. Um, and uh, that's just super important to make sure to it, that we can advance to do all these additional things that we're not even thinking about yet as far as uh, going beyond Mars. Yeah, and what's, what's incredible is whatever you all set your sights on, um, you always end up finding a way to do it. <laughs> so, uh, so we can just look forward to that reusability in the years ahead. Uh, okay, so of course this launch has occurred in a very interesting time. And so I assume you all had to change some of your preparations because of this, the, the pandemic situation we're in. But um, I do wanna say it's been an incredibly unifying moment for this country in a time of great challenge. Um, it's a, an opportunity for us to, to kind of see, see the future, um, experience the future in real time. But I have to think that there was extra preparation. So maybe Jim, you could talk a little bit more about any extra preparations you all did with the team and obviously the astronauts as well. Yeah, it's a great question, Adina. And you think about with, uh, with NASA, we've been doing that type of, uh, uh, we've been careful with our astronauts for a long time because if way before COVID, if we had gotten, uh, you know, somebody bring uh, the flu or a cold up to the space station really could be, really create a great challenge for us. We could get them back quickly. We've got doctors monitoring them all the time. Uh, we have a team of doctors, I should say, but you know, along with that, it was the people around them. You know, they were they were quarantined, and they're, they're but they're always quarantined. But it's get it, making sure that everyone that came in contact with them, them and their families were were being very caref careful with everything that all of us are doing: social distancing, the the protective gear, everything. And so, uh, so we continue to do that. Uh, it, we have to, you know, we've got a, a mission. Uh, in July, going to Mars, uh, unmanned, of course, and you know, again, we're we're hypersensitive on keeping our teams healthy because we're going to lose. You know, we would lose the opportunity to do these missions if if they get sick. Mm -hmm. And Gwen, do you want to add anything to what what you all are doing at, at SpaceX to make sure that you can continue to have your full operating capability at this time? Yeah, so we had to have a two-prong approach. First of all, we needed to make sure that we could keep our doors open. So we worked very closely with, uh, with Jim uh, at, at NASA um, and his staff to make sure we had letters that allowed our employees to come into work, even if they were stopped. So we need to make sure our doors were open. And then we also needed to make sure that once we had open doors, that our employees could come in and work uh, effectively and safely. Well, it is an interesting time indeed, but um, again, you know, the unifying nature of what NASA represents to this country and to the world, um, and the, the innovation of what SpaceX is bringing to the space economy is truly unprecedented. And it is also, a, it, a, it's also kind of that, that great representation of what this country represents in terms of innovation, entrepreneurship, um, and the ability to find a way forward when there's a will, there's a way here in this country. Um, and you all really represent that in every way. So I want to thank you both very much for joining us today. And I just wish you all the best as you work with the astronauts while they're there and, and while you bring them home. So we look forward to seeing that, that next stage. So thank you all very much. You know, Adina, one thing, sure. and I think Gwen, Gwen would agree, we've got these mission objectives, but we're also here to inspire the next generation, so important. And it's, and yes, Gwen said it, to help unite this country. And also for, there's so many people suffering right now and we hope that both SpaceX and, and NASA bring hope to people. Uh, we're gonna get through all this and, uh, and we're part of it. And uh, it's about caring for others and expanding the human condition. And that's what we do. Agreed. So thank you. You're going to make us a stronger nation. I'm, I'm totally convinced of that. So thank you all very much.